China's President Xi Jinping is talking tough. He has warned that foreign powers will get their heads bashed if they attempt to bully or influence his country. He delivered a defiant speech at an event marketing or marking the centenary of the ruling Communist Party. Mr. Xi also said Beijing would not allow what he called sanctimonious preaching. The remarks are widely seen as directed at the United States. It comes as China faces criticism over alleged human rights abuses and its crackdown on Hong Kong. And we're now being joined by Farai Movuti. He is a South, from the South African Times. He's a senior analyst. Thank you very much for joining us, Farai. Thank you for having me. Great. Um, let's start with the fact that um, China is marking its 100th anniversary. And, of course, a lot of people have described China in different ways. But how would you describe China's growth over the years? Well, sort of a miracle, uh, if you consider the fact that uh, China has gone through quite a number of uh, very epochal moments, if you consider that uh, from the, uh, from the, uh, the history of, of Mao Zedong to, to Deng Xiaoping, when he introduced the, uh, the moment of reform for the country after facing quite a number of years of extreme poverty, I mean, to put it to basic, in, in, in basic terms, China was literally uh, uh, had more poor people and still does to a degree more poor people than they had than, than in Africa GDP wise a very weak uh, space but over 30 years post their reform they have been able to uh, grow their economy uh, move uh, a number of uh, over 700 million people from poverty uh, to the middle class and they've been able to create great strides in areas of technology military progress uh, expand their investment externally and uh, further their, uh, their aspirations within an economic, diplomatic way, which makes them quite different to, uh, to, uh, to a number of the, uh, uh, their co continental partner or global partners within the econo economic village, as it were. Well, um, President Xi Jinping is saying that China will come down hard on these foreign powers that attempt to bully or influence it. Um, what kind of message do you think he's sending to the likes of the U.S. and the U.K.? Well, I think uh, we need to read that within the context uh, of, of what he was saying in a historical fashion. China did experience quite a, a, a large extent of external influences within the colonial experiences that it went through. So you had the Nazi Germany's going in at, at one point in time. You had, of course, the British and the, the history of, uh, of uh, opium and so forth. So it's a very egregious history. And when you look at it within the context of, say, the writings of people such as foreign advisors uh, to, to, the, to, to Carter at the time, uh, people like Brzezinski, who are uh, for, uh, you know, national foreign advisors within the U.S., who spoke about Chinese containment, right, and, uh, and then contrast that perhaps in a further, you know, in, in a more progressive approach uh, when we find Nixon, uh, President Nixon, who then comes in under the advice of uh, Henry Kissinger, who advises a more progressive approach to uh, engage in China. That temperament has since changed over the years. If we look at what Trump recently uh, introduced with the trade war itself and the continuation of the Trump policy by Biden, uh, what the position has been for China, they look at it from a colonial uh, disposition. So within a decolonial fashion, he, he, he echoed the sentiment saying external, fact, uh, external influences will not be tolerated in the context of that particular history. How perhaps it's received in the West, I, I think we've seen mixed messages. They have seen it perhaps more as a, a message of antagonizing uh, because they, it is their belief that China has uh, 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 well, uh, desires to uh, further expand, to have an expansionist approach to its foreign policy. And yet China, within uh, President Xi's speech, seems to deny that. It says that we have no, we, we have no ambitions to take over any inch or to... to uh, influence or to further uh, exterminate any nation or to threaten any nation. We seek peace and we seek peaceful engagement through the art of diplomacy, uh, which seems to be very different to the, uh, to the global North's perception of what the current situation circumstances are as they, as they currently are, are ongoing with the uh, current uh, uh, conflict, a uh, diplomatic conflict with China. Now, over time, China seems to, I mean, this is something that you know pretty well, uh, Africa seems to prefer China over, you know, other uh, countries. And China has made its presence known in Africa in terms of, you know, finances, technology, and, and a lot more. Uh, will, will you say that China has become some sort of a threat to other countries that would really want to be in the position that it is right now in Africa? 
Well, I think one would assume so, considering that uh, the next frontier economically is Africa. We have quite a huge amount of economic uh, prospects that are unexploited. If you look at the three inflations that the global community is currently facing, which is uh, strategic resources inflation, water inflation, and equally uh, food inflation, most of these are answered in, in, in Africa. And what China has been able to do into post 2000, when it, when it uh, began to uh, expand its external, its outlook in, ter in terms of its uh, economic uh, uh, investment uh, trajectory, its engagement with Africa, and equally historic as well, if you look back as far as the early 70s, when uh, they engaged uh, Africa during its colonial. Uh, 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 experience. They were quite a big support system. This, to most countries, is seen as a threat in within the context of the strategy uh, that perhaps some would uh, call the containment of China. Whereas in Africa, there's a welcoming of Chinese investment purely because it focuses on the fundamental aspects, of the uh, fundamental concerns that Africa has. Africa has a huge infrastructural gap. It intends to fill that. It has to create a huge amount of employment in order to cater to its radically young population, which, of course, is a domestic concern to many nations. So as a consequence, it is imperative that uh, partnerships that focus primarily on very critical issues, uh, such as uh, infrastructural development, are very much welcome in Africa uh, without, perhaps, the constringent structural um, adjusting uh, and equally uh, uh, preaching of values uh, approach, which tend to be exacerbated by the West, which of course is not to suggest that this is a bad thing, but yeah. I think from a pragmatic perspective, from a, 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 within the context of diplomacy, uh, Africa has chosen, well, predominantly has chosen China purely because of its, uh, what it terms to be pragmatic diplomacy. Well, and looking, and looking at uh, the future, how well do you think this relationship is going to last, uh, especially with the skeptics, you know, um, making references to the fact that, you know, uh, China might come for Africa someday. Uh, and, and so uh, to use the African balance, we should eat with China with a long spoon. Um, what does the future hold between uh, China-Africa relations? Well, I think it's really incumbent upon African policymakers, whose duty it is to negotiate uh, with a sense of shrewdness and understand who they're negotiating with. Well, in the words of Sun Tzu, know your enemy, or rather, in, within a, co a commercial context, would say, know your opponent and know yourself in victory certain. So it's much important that uh, it's much more important and fundamental, especially for uh, policymakers in Africa to have a, 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 an approach that ensures that it safeguards their interests and as much as they intend to expand the infrastructure. Uh, so it has to, we have to have a measured approach, but equally understanding that the problems uh, that the global e eco economy may have within, within, the, within the context of diplomacy, uh, when these major economies fight against each other, this is not primarily our problem. It should add to our leverage rather than subtract from our own ambitions. We should utilize this as an opportunity for us to further negotiate more constringent, more shrewd deals that ensure that it capacitates us and, in, it, and it places uh, our best foot forward in order to enhance our capacity and uh, further uh, uh, expand our ability to be major players within the global economy. Uh, Farai Mavuti is of the Southern Africa Times and he's a senior analyst. Thank you very much for speaking with us. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.